I'm going to talk about how to attack a city that is by itself. Um, it seems initially that a city that doesn't have any units on it, any blue units, would be defenseless or helpless. But that's not true, especially when it's fortified. Now, without the fortification on its own, the city, this one particularly, Toledo, has uh, three combat factors. So that means that Posas here, he doesn't have any combat factors as a, as a commander, but he is commanding two units with one plus two, three combat factors. So actually it's three against this little three here. It would be a dice of three. This is a three dice. There's only three against three. It looks like it's pretty even, right? However, in this particular case, Toledo is fortified, which means whatever these forces launch against it, uh, they can only use one third, as indicated here. If the defense has a fortification, attacker uses one third of roll. Now, in terms of the attack, any forces that are within one transit point away can also join in on the attack. Uh, this is a transit point here, so it will be just here, here, and here. Uh, any forces there can join in, not this one, because this would be one, two transit points away. Because of these very bad odds, we're actually going to join in all these forces. So Posos, we already know, has uh, three combat factors. Miaha has two, plus the army of the center, uh, four, uh, actually five, five combat factors. So five plus two of Miaha plus one of the artillery. That's quite impressive. Five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, ten, eleven. So it's eleven against three. This little three here. Not that easy because they'll have to do one third uh, of eleven in order to be able to. Uh, they have to have more than three in order to be able to move into the city. So they have to have a score of at least four. And given the fact that you only have 11 to play with, uh, as a matter of fact, you have to have a high number because you're only gonna get a third. So even though you have all these forces attacking a fortified city, as Toledo is uh, difficult. And that's exactly what happened historically. Toledo was pounded for, for, uh, for, for many weeks before it fell. And there was only a, a small garrison inside. We follow. We added up the, uh, the CF. There's no modifiers here to speak of. Uh, we've already picked the dice. Uh, we have to, we pay the attack for the attack. So we have to pay 11 for the um, Republic. So that's 11. And we have to pay three. One, two, three for the Nationalists. That's the, the combat cost. So we take two and three and the six dice, and we're gonna roll. Republicans, four, five, six, seven. And what's one third of seven? A third of seven is two. Two is less than three, so you cannot take the city. It was a defeat for them. A city by itself doesn't have to roll. It's always an absolute three. So that was a failure. Not only that, it cost them money, but now these forces are spent. Includes the artillery, of course, because it's attached to that army. You need to pay an action point to for each of them to, to, to take those those yellow cubes away. So there it is. Very simple situation where the city just escaped being taken over. And of course, had they had uh, you know more forces in there, it would have been even worse. Uh, but in this case, what would have happened? Let's just say there was a, a force in there like that. Two. Now, I would have added the combat factors two plus three here equals five. So we would have done that. And actually, what would have happened would be here's five. In this case, because there is a force in there, we take the whole amount of combat factor and we roll it with the fraction. So it would have been, look, four and one third. So one third 
of 4 is 1. So in this case, if the force was there, it would have been a worse result. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way. It's usually better to have a lot of forces in there, not just a, a small one, right? But this is to say that when there is no forces in the city, the garrison will fight especially harsh. Uh, so that's why the 3 is always an absolute 3 in this case. Or in other cities, Cordoba, very small amount, uh, an absolute 1 and so forth, right? But if there's forces there, there's a little bit more, you know, it's not, it's not a desperate defense. So that's why attacking a fortified city is uh, such a, uh, you know, a difficult proposition. There's all, all other ways you can do it. If you were encircling it, um, you know, you would have uh, an attack, um, you know, if, if it was a pincer attack or an envelopment or encirclement, you'd have a lot more modifiers there to help you. So there it is. Pretty much like it happened in uh, reality, Toledo was successfully defended. So what happened historically is uh, Yagwe here, instead of, you know, after he took the horse and that, instead of uh, going to to relief, uh, instead of attacking Madrid, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, if Franco's forces and, and Yagwe's and the other guys uh, had attacked Madrid at this stage in the war, you know, uh, September 1936, Madrid might have fallen. But they decided to not do that and to go after uh, to, to, to try to relief uh, the Alcazar de Toledo, uh, you know, because it was a very it was a high propaganda, high propaganda value for the nationalists. And this is where historians believe, historians believe that Franco might have done this on purpose in order to prolong the war. I personally don't believe that that's the case, but, uh, you know, uh, it's more of a complicated explanation. But they believe that this was the first instance that Franco had a, an opportunity to prolong the war because he knew that way, he had a greater chance of, uh, of taking absolute power at some point, uh, which he did, you know, he became the Caudillo. Um, and more importantly, he would use the time to, like he said himself, as, a, uh, as an olive press, to slowly uh, get rid of his opposition. In proportion, it's similar to what the Nazis were doing in World War II, although I would never compare Franco to the Nazis. In World War II, the the Nazis used the war as cover to exterminate the Jews. Here we're not talking about extermination of people per se, but uh, nevertheless a political extermination of the, of the classes that were against the, uh, against the nationalists, which was the reason that they rebelled in the first place, to get rid of uh, the, the, the divisiveness in Spain, uh, the communists, the leftists, uh, Freemasons, the, uh, the Basques, and uh, the Catalonians that were, wanted their own independence. So anyway, big history lesson there, but the uh, main thing here is about uh, fortified city, how that is defended very effectively by its garrison, by the nationalists, 